Welcome to Maze Legal Challenge. This problem is flood fill. An image represented by a 2D array of integers, each integer representing a pixel value, uh, is given to us. Uh, given a coordinate SRSC, that represents row and column, uh, representing the starting pixel of the flood fill and a pixel value new color, flood fill the image. So yeah, like, you know, in paintbrush, if there's um, this picture and you're trying to flood fill the whole thing, it's gonna change all the color surrounding it to this new color as long as they touch each other at some point. Here it's four directionally, up, down, left, or right. So say that we're like given an image like this. It's, it's kind of hard to see here. Um, just paint that like this. So say it's like an image like this. This represents like black, this is white. Uh, and we're given the pixel one, one, and a new color of two. Like right here, say we're clicking at this point, we want all these ones to turn into two. Um, and this one here remaining is gonna remain a one because it doesn't touch like four directionally. So if you look at our output, that's what it looks like, two, 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 and one still remains here. So this problem actually isn't too bad. It really reminded me of the islands problem where you basically start at a point and you want to check down, left, and right, and make sure some conditions hold that we're not outside the grid, we're not outside the image, and we need to also make sure that the color is the same as our starting point, and each time we visit this, this you know, uh, point, we want to update it with our new color. Now there's one thing they got to remember that I'll mention later, but this is basically a depth first search sort of problem. Um, let's first start with initializing, first figuring out what our current color at this point is, because uh, that's the only way we'll know whether to expand out and continue our recursive call. So our current color, that's just gonna be our image, what, row and column. And that represents an integer, that's gonna be the current color, and let's create a function um, called depth for search. Yeah, we'll call it depth for search. And what we're going to pass in, we're going to pass in obviously our um, current color. Actually, do we need to pass all this? I don't even know if we need to pass any of this. It might just be enough to pass in the, the row and column. And, and, we'll, and we'll see, we'll find out if that's true. So what's our base condition, right? Now normally you usually, st for that first search, you say like if not and return. Um, but for this case, I think it's fine to go the opposite way and say, all right, if this condition is hold, then run um, all these updates that we're gonna do. Otherwise, it's just gonna continue on and, and end the function. So let's first make sure that it's within our grid. And I guess I should, store the height and width here. Store height would be what, it, the number of rows, so it's just the length of image. And width would be equal to the length of image, zero. So that's gonna be the width. <clears throat> and we gotta make sure that this is, let's see, the height, row, yep, so it, it has to be greater or equal to zero or less than height and column, um, same thing here, zero with columns, greater or equal to SC, less than width. And the color of where we're at needs to equal the color that we pass in, right? So I don't I actually don't know if we need to pass it in because it's just an integer. We can just say, is it the color that we initially started with? Because if it's not, then we could get out. And we actually need one more condition here. We need to make sure that um, that we haven't visited. So if this image does not equal the new color, and the reason for that is. Uh, there's a weird use case that could happen if you're filling the same color on itself because if, if it thinks that 
yeah, the current color is here and it hasn't updated. Like originally we were keeping track of that by storing the new color, but if we're filling it with the same color, then we wouldn't know if we've actually been here. So we need this extra thing here to make sure that, yeah, we, we don't need to update this again. We've been here. All right. So if all these conditions are held, then let's first update our our pixel. Let's say, okay, make that equal to new color. And finally, let's call our DFS and say SR uh, plus one, zero. And we'll do this four times. And what am I doing? That's not right. C, SR minus one, C, do plus one, minus one. Yeah, you can see my awesome typing skills. And once this is finished, we, uh, well, we've got to first call it. And that might be it. So let me see if this works. Yep, okay, so that did finish. Um, actually, this is slightly different than my first time, but let, let me see if this works. Yep, it's got accepted. Yeah, so it's the very same thing as like the, the islands problem. Um, the only difference it was this, the only thing you've got to remember is we need to have some way of tracking that we've visited before. If you remember with the islands problem, we do that by flipping it to the zero, right? We just um, flip the ones to a zero so we know that we visited or it was originally a zero. Uh, but here, because of this weird situation where we uh, might update it to its same color, we also need to make sure that it doesn't equal the new color. So so that we don't get into this infinite recursion. All right, that's it, thank you.